Welcome back to our series, History from St. Paul's, from St. Paul's Church National Historic Site in Mount Vernon, New York, seen here in these images of the stone and brick church surrounded by gravestones in the historic cemetery. Today, recognizing Black History Month, we explore the life of a man named Benjamin Turner, represented by this drawing of a man pulling the reins of an oxen-drawn cart with three young children seated in the wagon. He was an African-American man who lived for several decades in the 19th century on a small farm adjacent to St. Paul's Church. His poignant biography reflects a local transition from slavery to freedom, the importance of establishing a setting for family stability, and a vanished pre-industrial rural American experience. While Benjamin's specific origins are difficult to determine, the 1770 will of a widow named Phoebe Turner offer a likely explanation. A follower of the Quaker faith, Ms. Turner lived in the town of Westchester, about five miles south of St. Paul's. She declared that upon her death, all enslaved people in her possession would have the capacity to choose new masters, described in the written document shown here. This policy eventually led to the emancipation of the enslaved on her farm, including Benjamin Turner, who was just a child in the 1770s. Ben's first documented presence in this vicinity appears in the early 1800s as the husband of a woman named Rebecca. She was enslaved on the estate of Gloriana Franklin, a local wealthy widow who was also a Quaker, recorded in the written document drawn from the town records shown here. Ben helped obtain Rebecca's freedom in 1810, recorded in the transcribed listings of manumissions in New York, which is shown here. They took up informal residence on unused land just off the church's property, reflected in this drawing of a man working a small farm patch with a cabin, river, and church also visible. In time, they established a homestead there with the tacit approval of the community. Ben and Rebecca's affiliations, even as formerly enslaved people with well-known local families, is probably what made this residential arrangement possible. A subsistence farm was developed and the couple raised a family that eventually included six children. Living on the banks of the Hutchinson River, the Turners supplemented their diet with fish, clams, and oysters, captured in this colorful drawing of a man fishing from a boat and showing the underwater scene of schools of fish and a turtle. Ben's ownership of the land was acknowledged by the community and formalized through the payment of taxes. This drawing depicts an elderly African-American man and a woman and three children, hands clasped in prayer, seated at a table with food. It helps understand how Ben's position as an independent landowner allowed him to establish a stable family life within the severe prejudicial restrictions that circumscribed African-Americans' opportunities in New York. An indication of Ben's respect within the community emerges through a, se a selection he received from the town in 1818. A brief mention in the local records announced that stray animals, confiscated as a public nuisance by the town pounder, would be held at the Turner property pending payment of a fine and a return to the rightful owner, which was recorded in the written document shown here. The location of Ben's farm at the center of town was certainly one reason for this designation. But this appointment indicates something more substantial. Contemporary references to black people in local records usually outline procedures for the gradual emancipation of slavery, recorded the requirement that free laborers post good behavior bonds or offered rewards for returning runaway slaves, represented by this drawing of a black man in movement with a satchel suspended from a stick over his shoulder. In other words, they were references that reflect conditions of subordination and exclusion. In this context, Ben's selection as assistant pounder represents an extraordinary amount of public confidence placed in a man born into slavery who had been a town resident for less than 10 years. His willingness to designate a parcel of his property as the pound, offering compensated services to the municipality, also suggests Ben's resourceful approach to sustaining the family and the land. These 19th century photographs represent the stone and brick St. Paul's Church with its tall steeple and adjoining cemetery from different angles. Living perhaps 100 yards from the edifice, Benjamin and the Turner family were naturally congregants at St. Paul's. It was the town's sole house of worship. African Americans had participated in the religious activities of the parish since the early 1700s. 
Clearly, religion functioned as an element of the spiritual and social lives of the Turners, and affiliation with St. Paul's helped confirm Ben's standing as a community member. But in a reflection of the racial climate of the period, his children attended the segregated or all-black Sunday school, reflected in the document in the ledger book shown here. The family would have worshipped from benches in the church gallery, which is shown here, since pew boxes were parceled out to families based on larger donations. By the late 1830s, after Ben's death, Rebecca Turner joined other families in a growing African-American population in the founding of a nearby independent black church. Probably aged in his mid-60s, Ben passed away in the early 1830s. While he may be interred in the St. Paul Cemetery, which is shown in this photo of gravestones, the church, and trees, there is no record of such a burial in the parish log. But he clearly helped impart to his wife, children, and grandchildren the importance of land as a means to securing an independent existence, values which sustained the family ground into the 20th century, captured in this written document, which reports his granddaughter's efforts in 1916 to retain the Turner land. In the 21st century, his local legacy was solidified with the renaming of a nearby Mount Vernon public school as the Benjamin Turner Middle School, represented by this colorful mural at the school's entrance, which is shown here. Please join us again next time for another episode of History from St. Paul's.